All right, um, welcome to uh, session 8B, uh, PPC, Google search ads of uh, making your funnel work program. Uh, we're gonna skip the entire recap of the, the last uh, few uh, weeks, uh, just to fresh up our mind uh, and where we ended uh, last Monday session with, uh, is this uh, funnel and reverse funnel. Uh, now we're going to talk about uh, the coming ways about uh, getting uh, 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 traffic. Of course, uh, we talked about organic search, but uh, um, we talked a lot about on-site uh, management, usability, uh, A-B testing, uh, leads, conversions, uh, upselling, cross-selling, marketing automation, email, engagement, loyalty, and all the stuff. And retention, and uh, not, well, we didn't talk about win back. Um, but um, it's inherent, inherent to uh, what we discussed. And uh, of course, uh, social commerce and uh, uh, integrating shares, likes, and reach. It's uh, in the beginning of um, your earned media. So theoretically now we have a scope of our total funnel we can start investing money and uh, today we're going to talk about uh, for a lot of companies the most important or one of the two free top um, traffic sources paid search um, what we're going to talk about is uh, the importance of uh, paid search, uh, the inner workings, keyword research, uh, keyword modifiers, uh, account structure, uh, Google Analytics, connections, UTM tracking we're gonna talk about in the end, uh, bidding strategy, uh, targeting options we're not gonna talk about, uh, search partners, uh, neg negative keyword, ad extensions a lot, uh, quality score, ad copy and landing page again, um, and product feeds we talk about uh, in the end. Some stats the coming slides. Uh, I'm just going to read them uh, for you. 45% of small businesses invest in PPC advertising. 87% of marketers say that they rely on Google ads and social media ads to get their message out uh, for paid uh, channels. Paid ads have uh, on average 11.38% um, uh, uh, CTR on Google search in the top block, uh, top free block. 41% of paid clicks go to the top three ads on the results page. Um, paid ads get 65% of all the clicks uh, for searches from buyers looking to purchase a product. So not from all search queries, um, but on uh, queries uh, with uh, a buying intent, they do get uh, a lot of clicks, the most uh, two third. Um, and the top Paid ad, uh, according to OQRS, has a, 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 an average uh, CTR of 7.94%, while the average CTR is 2%. It's on all the ad positions. This is uh, a chart from marketing charts uh, from July 2018. Um, and this is uh, this talks about how difficult marketers find it to uh, attribute uh, revenue or conversions to a specific channel. And here you see that uh, most easily is the yellow or the green, whatever you're calling uh, color preferences. Um, is email marketing, then paid search and display advertising, and, and then social media. And the least uh, uh, easy is content marketing. So. That's the reason why a lot of uh, companies uh, spend a lot of money on paid search because uh, they know what's happening and they can measure it uh, beyond what they ever dreamed of before they got paid search. Um, B2B marketing. Um, what are the strategies for, uh, for 2020 and on content marketing? Uh, and on the second position, digital advertising, retargeting, and PPC, what we're going to talk about today. And of course, uh, the third is uh, email and then video. So PPC stays very important. 
here we can see uh, e-commerce web shop conversion rates uh, by traffic source. I think we saw this slide uh, in the beginning, also in one, uh, one of the first three or four sessions. Um, Yeah, in, in the session of organic search, and now we're talking about paid search. It's uh, it's uh, uh, this almost the same uh, conversion rate as organic, from a little bit higher, uh, but it's high in the, the overall uh, scope, two point six percent. So it's one of your best traffic sources, and especially because you can measure it so well. On the risk side, you you're not a, uh, of course it costs money, but you can manage the money. Like you don't have to spend thousands of uh, euros or pounds uh, to find out how it works. Um, in the United States, uh, Google has the smallest market share, but still uh, enormous, like you see here on the on the yellow bars. Uh, but in other countries, especially the European countries, uh, Google share is even bigger uh, than here. Uh, but in the United States, they have on desktop a 78% market share for the paid, uh, paid advertising. I believe in search queries, it's even bigger. On tablet, 84 and on uh, mobile phones, 95%. Uh, but the, uh, the only network you really have to consider uh, uh, next to it is uh, Bing from Microsoft. Um, these are stats from the quarterly report for Merkle. They publish it on their blog. It's uh, interesting to uh, to uh, to get an update of these stats every um, quarter. Um, and per vertical or per industry, you see uh, what the growth was. And uh, of course, you have to consider this is a corona year, so uh, minus forty percent from the quarter uh, third quarter uh, two thousand nineteen is uh, of course not. Um, surprise, uh, more surprising maybe it's that uh, uh, they uh, got a 22% in, uh, increase in clicks and 12% uh, increase in ad spend on um, uh, in the e-commerce and consumer goods uh, uh, industry and also uh, a, lot, a big increase in B2B. So, um, but travel is a big vertical, I know, for Google. But Google overall reported better results than last year due to the increase of uh, online activities that compensates uh, the travel industry. So how does um, Google auction work? Um, I assume you know that uh, we're going to talk about uh, keywords only today uh, and keyword advertising. So what uh, kind of search queries uh, people do in the Google search uh, engine? Uh, but also on other assets of Google. So also on uh, YouTube search um, and also uh, image search, I believe. Um, but in the end, from every uh, search query, a lot of parameters get um, analyzed, like what's the time of local time of day, the language, um, the device, what they clicked on before, which sites they click it, uh, visited before in their both advertising and also organic. Um, I, be, I believe Google saves your data for two years, I believe, um, if you don't delete it. Um, and it's not in your browser, it's under your Google account. So it's a, another dimension of uh, data. Um, so deleting your cookies doesn't matter. Um, and then of course there are advertisers who want to be in front of you uh, because you uh, do a search query like um, download fashion app or uh, top five wardrobe apps, for example. Um, and you want to be, uh, uh, in that kind of search query, you want to be on top uh, of the search query because you think that uh, traffic has to see you and you expect to have a high conversion rate. Um, 
on a goal. So you advertise and you say, well, I'm going to pay for each click on that kind of search query with, uh, with search query who have that specific keyword, you do a bid. Um, and then depending on what others bid and on your quality score, um, it's decided, Google decides which position your ads being showed. Um, and you pay a click fee and depending on how high your conversion rate is you can calculate a cost per acquisition so for example from this uh high relevant traffic that uh, for the keyword we just uh, uh, uh top five uh, wardrobe apps um or download wardrobe app uh, we want to uh, be in front and we say, well, we want to pay, say, for example, uh, three pounds per click. It would be a little bit high, but uh, 30 cents. And uh, if we have, a, say, 25% conversion rate uh, of that kind of traffic, and 30 cents uh, by four clicks, uh, this one pound 20. So we pay one pound 20 for that conversion. Four clicks, that's a quarter. Uh, times uh, 30 cents. The quality uh, score, we're going to discuss it uh, uh, more in detail uh, uh, a few slides down the road, but a really important factor because um, uh, it can split your cost or quadruple your cost, depending on how low or high your quality score is. And you see it here that the, the first or the second or the advertisers, they pay uh, more money but they have a lower uh, quality score. So uh, the position um, in the search engine is uh, less higher. Google always optimize in general uh, for first, uh, how, uh, that they can main, um, um, uh, in the long run have the maximum revenue, but they have the philosophy that um, they have to serve their users as good as possible. So a good user experience um, is illustrated by a high conversion rate. So the website with the highest conversion rates and the most relevant uh, landing page uh, will pay far less than somebody who has a less relevant landing page because they have a less better, offer a less better experience to that user. Um, that being said, keyword research, we uh, already talked about keyword research uh, extensively during our SEO session. Uh, it's from uh, slide, slide 16 and on, I believe it's about six, seven slides. Um, Google, we also discussed, uh, mentioned there that you could, could use Google Keyword Planner as a tool. It's free once you have set up a Google uh, Ads account uh, and you get a lot of uh, trustworthy data. Um, you don't have to do it uh, again. Of course, you can extend uh, your list, uh, keyword list that you already built, but for most uh, companies or organizations that uh, already build their list with uh, SEO or from an SEO perspective, they can uh, just use that list. You don't have to, generally don't have to create a specific list. Just a second. No, this is not a good slide. It was a good slide, excuse me. Um, while setting up your uh, account, uh, you have keyword modifiers, and we're going to discuss it here with keywords. Um, because it belongs to keywords. Um, you have four kinds of modifiers. If you don't use anything, then you're advertising uh, standard uh, for um, the keywords in their most richest, also uh, richest form. So also with uh, synonyms and alternatives. So for example, here, what you see on the screen is formal shoes, but uh, formal footwear, uh, evening footwear, men's dress, wing tips, all these kinds of words, your ad also will be shown. Um, 
if you uh, use a modified uh, broad, uh, you put a plus on it, and it means that it has to have exactly that word. Um, but it doesn't matter in which position, on the end of the query syntax or syntax or in the in the beginning. Um, if you for every uh, word you do in the in the you, uh, you add a plus two uh, that um, has also be exactly in the query but not in the in the in the any I say uh, sequence. Um, then you have a uh, phrase match, uh, for example, formal shoes, black formal shoes, formal shoes for men, etc., etc. It has to be in a, in a certain uh, sequence. And exact is uh, nothing less, nothing more, nothing different. Um, so you will only, uh, your ad will only be shown with uh, the brackets. Um, if they type in exactly formal shoes and nothing else, shoes formal, your ad will not show. So um, once you have your keyword list, you can um, trick it with these modifiers. Then of course you have also negative keywords. Um, well, besides advertising on the right keywords with the right modifiers, it's also important to exclude keywords that don't deliver any monetary value. For example, uh, if you're not interesting in, uh, interested in people who are looking for a job or a vacancy or that kind of uh, or, or internship, um, you want to exclude those kinds of keywords. Uh, of course, if you have a shop, um, then uh, but you uh, people are looking for a specific brand that you don't sell. Um, of course, you can test for a while if, if maybe you can uh, try to convince them to buy uh, your brand or the brand you're, you're selling. Uh, but if you find out, hey, that doesn't work, uh, it's a nice idea, but it doesn't work, then you uh, put them on your negative keyword list. Um, of course, you have also words uh, with other meaning. In this example, visa carpus or visa application, same with glasses or wine glasses. Um, and also, you can use negative lists to cross exclude amongst campaigns. Um, so, for example, if you uh, if you have a, have a, have a, a web shop and you uh, sell uh, night shoes, Adidas shoes, and um, Reebok shoes, I'm not sure if the brand still exists, but um, then you can, could cross exclude them uh, on uh, every page. So you make free negative list and on uh, you uh, exclude it on uh, two of them on each campaign. Um, where list manage from a tools and settings, shared library, negative keywords uh, can be activated on campaign level or ad group level. Connecting Google Analytics. It's important uh, for conversion tracking. Um, we talk about uh, how you can uh, your advertising strategy in a, in, a, in a second, but then you understand why uh, conversion tracking is so important. Uh, if you set, have set up goals in Google Analytics, then you can import those goals into Google Ads. Also, uh, app installs and in and in app purchases. Um, and even in-app behavior can uh, be uh, goals. Uh, if you have set up those goals in Firebase, um, you can also advertise on it, like um, for, for one of the kind of app that if you would like to have them a goal, like uh, upload a document, for example, that if that would be goal, you can also uh, advertise towards that goal. And also for call conversions, you can have um, uh, advertise. So if people call your number, you get redirected through a, a phone call and uh, Google tracks how long uh, the phone call uh, takes. Um, any more information is on the link below. Um, also, is it possible uh, to, from uh, the connection of Google Analytics to uh, start building retargeting lists? Um, 
it's not officially GDPR safe. Um, because you have to enable an advertising uh, feature in Google Analytics. Uh, so you have to be aware of that, but um, retargeting at all, you have to have an opt-in for it. So it's not something new. I just want to point it out here. Uh, but the interesting thing of this uh, feature is um, that um, you can create uh, segments of any kind of behavior, for example, who entered on landing page A, but uh, didn't convert, uh, but did visit uh, within a week after it again, say something like that. So you can really uh, uh, be uh, smart in your cre creativity. Well, then what kind of, uh, uh, how does Google uh, Ads work? Uh, of course you have an account or several accounts, but accounts is usually the, perspective where you look at, uh, at, 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 at an account. Um, you have several campaigns. It's the most, uh, let's say, uh, encompassing entity in an uh, ad account. Uh, under an ad group or a campaign are several ad groups. Within ad groups, you can have several ads. And an ad can have one or more keywords. Um, so what kind of uh, things do you uh, fix at the campaign level? Uh, well, what kind of uh, campaign you want to have? Uh, search, display, YouTube, advertising, etc. In this case, of course, search. Uh, if you want to uh, target specific devices, uh, and also towns, uh, app install ads you uh, choose there on a network level. Um, your daily campaign budget, so not overall, but uh, Google works with daily budgets. Um, Geo-targeting that goes from um, uh, countries, provinces, uh, municipalities, uh, cities and places. Uh, in some countries, they also have zip code targeting and they have uh, uh, radius targeting. Um, and both you can also exclude uh, schedules, like uh, you wanting uh, you ads only in the evening or a, a specific uh, every Monday or something. Uh, language, uh, um, bidding strategy we're going to talk about, and of course, uh, which uh, uh, what are your conversion goals for this campaign? Uh, and ads group uh, level, you uh, manage your ads, uh, adjust bids both for uh, ads key and keywords. Uh, and uh, your keywords modifiers. Um, and you can also use a, a device modifiers like, hey, I see that uh, my traffic converts a little less on the mobile traffic. You uh, have a feature to lower your uh, mobile bid. Well, what kind of bid, bidding strategies do you have? Um, Manual CPC, that's uh, old fashioned. You do everything yourself. Um, if you want to be on a specific uh, location on the page, for example, uh, a search query where you always want to be number one, that's possible, and then you're really going to pay. Um, but if, if it's worth it to you, you should do it. Uh, maximize the click, clicks, uh, guess, uh, get as many clicks possible for your budget. Um, Enhanced cost per click. Uh, tool case, uh, tool Google, Google takes a conversion intent prediction into consideration. It's a machine learning uh, feature. And they automatically continually uh, do a dynamic bit. You don't see that uh, intelligence. Um, maximize conversions. Get the most conversions while spending your budget. Machine learning for every auction to place bits based on your conversion rate and CPA target. Target CPA uh, for all the uh, ad advertising uh, strategies mentioned above, you don't need the account history. For uh, the two last two, target CPA and target ROAS, you do need an account history. And I believe you need at least 15 conversions in the last 30 days uh, to use those uh, kinds of bidding in your account. 
so they know uh, what your traffic does and get as many conversions as possible for your target CPA. Um, and well as return and well as stands for return on ad spend, a conversion value or revenue target you set. So it's more uh, they have more flexibility. And so again, this you do per campaign on campaign level. Then we're gonna talk about ad extensions. Um Here are a few examples uh, of ad extensions. We're going to go back to the earlier slide, but just then you know what we are talking about. Um, on the left above here, you see um, the site links extensions. So uh, somebody Googles for SEO tool. Uh, so that's you use the SEO tool uh, in, in, in the description of your ad. We're going to talk about ad copy also a few slides further down the road. But uh, you also show other links in your uh, ad. And these are side links. Uh, then you have also the possibility, the second uh, below here is uh, so 24 7 affordable plumbing in UT, in Utah, uh, I think. Um, There you see a, a red uh, thing in the in, in the location extension. Um, in the middle of the black iPhone, you see a, a price extension or an offer extension uh, price extension. Uh, below that Amazon Prime Video, you see an uh, install app install uh, on a mobile phone. Of course, mobile uh, they don't show on the desktop. Um, on the Sony TV upper right, you see an uh, affiliate link. Um, extension, so if you want to point out, uh, for, for example, specific traffic to your resellers that, uh, that you don't, they don't advertise, but you do the advertising for them, and, but you do send uh, traffic to them, well, this is the way to do it. And on the right below, you see, see a, a call extension. Um, that people can call from the mobile phone uh, when they click on it. It's the, the call process go, goes right away. So um, site link extensions, so links uh, on other page on your website, call out extensions, add additional text to, to your ad, like free delivery. So um, you have more space to uh, tell uh, users what you need, structure snippets, up, uh, uh, extension showcase information, potential customer will find value. Um, it's if your if your uh, landing page also has structured information, for example, for movie or event tickets or that kind of uh, uh, structures. Um, it's the same with, as with SEO, your structured uh, micro data. Uh, call extensions encourage people to call your business, especially for B two B that uh, or that uh, or any conversion that you like, you know, you convert well, if you get people on the phone, well, you really should use uh, uh, the call extension location. If you want to send them to your offline location, same with affiliates, uh, affiliate off, uh, uh, offline uh, location. So not to a website, but to an offline location. Um, price extension showcase your service prices with the prices. Uh, app extension we talked about. Promotion is to promote special offers like uh, I believe coming Friday, it's uh, Black Friday. Um, there are two extensions now, and beta image extensions like uh, uh, rounded square. Uh, you can show uh, as a product image. Um, lead form extension that uh, so it works only on search it, but then uh, Google pre-fills it with uh, data they have about the user, and people only have to uh, uh, click the submit button to uh, send you lead information. So it's same with uh, LinkedIn lead forms or uh, Facebook ad lead forms. We're gonna talk about that, but um, 
instance, if you want to collect user data leads. Um, a seller rating extension, you can uh, import reviews from a certain set of websites. Uh, and uh, if you have a high review, of course, uh, you want to show that in your advertising. So it's really interesting. You see, you say a few five stars, you see it in your ads, really uh, increase the CTR. Why would you use uh, extensions? You can expect to increase uh, the CTR on your ad between uh, anywhere between 10 to 20%. So you really should use it. Um, one to two extensions get shown per time. Google, um, if you have more, more extensions than uh, two, uh, configured, Google will test like, hey, which extensions work in which combination is best, and uh, we'll show it that way. Quality score. Well, the quality score of your ad tells Google how relevant your ad is to users for that search query. On the left, you see a table, how it works for your CPC. Like if you have a, a quality score of 10, it's the highest uh, number you can get, you pay half of the benchmark. Well, if you have a really low quality score, you pay four times the benchmark. So eight times as much as somebody who has um, 10. So how would, would this work? Um, If you would, for example, would advertise on a competitor's name and uh, on your landing page, there would be no information about the competitor, uh, but just you, you're, you're brute and you say, I want to have the traffic. Well, that's something in a, in a use case that uh, you will pay a lot of money for it in a per click sense. Um, what are the factors uh, that decide uh, that make up your quality score? Um, the expected CDR, CTR, uh, ad relevance, and it's a little bit of uh, CTR and uh, the keywords in it, and landing page experience. And of course, they all work intertwined. Um, how to improve the quality score of your landing page, like all normal optimization factors that we discussed in the landing page uh, session but only this time it really costs you money other than uh, more or less uh, conversion rates, but it really costs you money in the sense of cost per click. Or, uh, of course, mobile friendly, uh, SSL, load speed is really important factor for Google. Have the keywords on page. Um, how high your conversion rate is and also low, ba uh, low bounce rate and uh, high dwell rate. So, um, you can understand that certain search queries don't have a high conversion rate, but do uh, get traffic into the funnel of, uh, say, if you if, if you are a lease company, financial lease company for airplanes. Well, uh, and people uh, query for uh, uh, not a lot of people query for it, but uh, for uh, search for. Um, financial lease for uh, airplanes, um, you want to be on top of it. And that the probability that those people will convert, either it is for a white paper download or uh, anything else, is not that big. But of course, if they don't return within a few milliseconds to Google, but they uh, stay longer on the page, uh, that's an indication for Google, okay, this is really relevant for this, uh, for this keyword. So uh, it's circumstantial, but if you do have a high conversion rate, it certainly helps your quality score. Ad copy. Well, we're going to click on this uh, link in a second because uh, well, it's interesting and we can really work with it. But in general, be specific uh, in your ad copy. So cheap car insurance query deserves really another ad than compare car insurance. Um, not to mention if there would be in the first query cheap car insurance like uh, buy 
cheap, uh, cheap car insurance or buy online cheap car insurance, etc. Like another uh, verb that indicates I want to do it now, where comparison is less, it's a stage before buying. Um, and with a keyword like something like compare, you really should have a comparison uh, tool on your website. Uh, nothing else, not one single brand, because uh, people won't like it. Uh, think about the user perspective and their intention. And the intention, of course, comes uh, not from reading their minds, but uh, what kind of keywords they use. So you also have to think about that with your ad grouping. Like if you would have a company that only buys, uh, sells uh, car insurances, uh, you could have ad group, say, comparison, ad group buying, ad group uh, branded, and ad group uh, with cheap or uh, easy and easy. Um, because uh, the quality score uh, is a history factor. So, you, uh, and you want to keep it for uh, per keyword level as, as good as possible. That's why you want to have the keywords together. Um, for your quality score in your management. Um, think about it. Use the keywords in the ad copy. Use keywords in the URL structure, preferably. That's not always uh, possible during, due to your CMS or other factors, but um, if possible, please use it in uh, the URL so people recognize it. Um, Include number of statistics or facts or percentages in your headline, like uh, get a temporarily discount of uh, 50% or uh, uh, number of one in the uh, uh, UK top startups, whatever, uh, make it interesting. Of course, if you have use peace benefits, this is the moment to uh, tell people about it. And if you have a temporary offer, uh, use a countdown feature in, uh, in Google Ads. Where's my mouse? Yeah. All right. Um, well, let's take something uh, from the BBC. No. Well, a final URL. What is the name of lady? Megan. Megan. Those Dutch. Ah. You understand the idea. You can uh, test anything here, how it looks on uh, both uh, uh, desktop and mobile. And also you can uh, test ad locations or uh, rating snippets, or at price extension, call extension. So you can look for yourself. It's a really nice tool. Put the call outs are here below. Or here, the side links. Difference between side links and call outs is if you can click on it or not. Uh, and both. I believe these descriptions have both uh, 90 characters, if I'm not wrong. Um, so nice tool uh, to look around, test around how uh, ads will look, uh, look at, uh, also with the snippets feature. Just uh, I want to show you how does this look like for a competitive keyword. 
I will do it in a Dutch third engine, but I'm sure you will understand. Uh, I'm tipping it in Dutch. Uh, buy cheap car insurance. And uh, well, you see four ads, and uh, the first SEO uh, result is just on the bottom. 82% uh, number one car in two minutes. Uh, uh, the keyword auto for sake, car for sake, car insurance, auto for saking is uh, mentioned everywhere, just in the in the top of the ad. Um, also, again, in most ad copy, you see they have a rating and a location um, feature. Well, uh, this insurance company do doesn't have any uh, ad extensions. Um, these are side link uh, extensions, and they don't have any extensions at also. Um, just to do another uh, query, like uh, tapping in buying a red dress. Uh, go to York Copen. Here, uh, Google Shopping ads. The, the, the other results don't have any um, extensions, but they do have the percentages. Uh, this one, I think, has a, they, they 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 really pay a lot for their uh, ads, but they do have uh, nice USPs, fast delivery, and top quality. Buy new uh, lady clothing, free euros discount on your first order. Uh, with a copy of that uh, gift gifting Black Friday. Well, a lot of keyword stuffing. Um, so, what would surprise me if they do well? Um, and so you get to the uh, deep link and uh, can you buy? So, There was ad copy, so um, be direct, be really, uh, this is, uh, Google forces you to sell. This is your moment. If you don't, uh, if you cannot convert on search traffic, in most cases, you will be in difficulty. I mean, there are always exceptions, but because the relevant, uh, the traffic is so relevant for the keywords you advertise, uh, it's really an opportunity really to sh uh, really test fast if uh, your landing page or your product works so or your value proposition um oh this is fast um utm tracking miscellaneous utm tracking on standard uh, you can put it somewhere in the settings of your uh, ad account you can put it off but standardized, um, all kinds of UTM tags will show up in your uh, Google Analytics account. So you don't have to uh, put it in, in, the, in, the, in the, uh, if you don't put it off, don't put it in your ad. You don't see it in the URL, but Google gives you a click ID, but then uh, if you look in your Google Analytics, you'll see everything campaign source, uh, really nice uh, configured. Um, Google Merchant Center, uh, there you can, uh, Add uh, product feed in product management for your shopping ads, and also you can add a product feed for your retarget dynamic retargeting ads. Like uh, if you want to uh, retarget people, uh, that's more is display, uh, but they are in Google Ads accounts. Um, you can of course import your costs. Uh, you do that in Google Analytics, but it is uh, uh, you can connect it with uh, your Google Ads accounts. And then you have rules and scripts. Um, 
scripts will run all the time and rules are more uh, when a criteria is met, for example, uh, uh, cross account setting a daily budget, then, then the rule is uh, stop advertising when the budget is full. Uh, but scripts work more uh, continuously, I believe every 15 minutes or something. Like if my CTA is, uh, CTR is lower than say 1%, then uh, uh, put off the ad or lower the bid uh, with say uh, 25%. Um, all this kind of automations are possible with Google Scripts. This was the last slide. Monday, we're gonna talk about Google Display Ads and YouTube Ads, then it's the same uh, dashboard, of course. Um, 